This is a video I've wanted to do for a while, but haven't really figured out exactly the best way of doing it because this is one of those videos where I just want to talk about things, but I don't want to bore you. So this is going to be a talking head like video. Hopefully I'm going to do some nice effects transitions to hopefully keep your attention and make it interesting to watch for you other than just listening to what I'm talking about. So what am I talking about? Nix OS, brother. Obviously, if you know anything about me or have kept up with this channel for the past little bit, I am completely and 100% involved in Nix OS. I absolutely love the distribution. I love Nix, the programming language. I've just in all, in all honesty, Nix OS to me is probably the best way of having a system that is yours, that has up-to-date packages, and gives you the best of both worlds when it comes to like Arch and stability. Uh, Arch, you get that bleeding edge packages, or you get those bleeding edge packages, those new packages. Like For example, there's a reason why Hyperland is typically very good on Arch, and it's because it's a, well, it's a constantly updating rolling type of package it's constantly being improved so arch is a good place for that the problem with that being is well arch in general has its packaging rolling so other things on your system are also constantly an update and that might not be how you want your system to be the really nice thing about Nix OS is it allows you to use something called flakes. It is an experimental feature. And even though I've talked about flakes in the past, uh, there's other videos on flakes. There's pages dedicated online to talking about flakes. It can be a little confusing on what the difference is between your regular Nix OS type configuration and a flake. So I'm going to do my best to describe what a flake is, even though Vimjoyer and others have done phenomenal jobs at explaining it. A flake is pretty, pretty simple. It, it is where you're going to take your configuration and put it in a separate little folder that is typically going to be a repository as again, Nix OS, if you've read anything about it is about reproducibility. So flakes takes that to the extreme and kind of integrates itself into working with a Git repository. So, for example, if I'm working on my Flake and I add a new file and then import it into, like, let's say, my configuration.nix, that new file needs to be added to the Git repository and tracked, or when I run my rebuild Flake switch command, it's going to fail, and tell me that the file I'm trying to import doesn't exist, even though it clearly is inside of the folder. The reason that's happening is Flakes will stop you from trying to add new things and forgetting to track them with your Git repository because you don't want to add a new file, get it all working, and then have a working system here and then tomorrow next week whenever hop on a different computer pull down the repository where you're storing your flake and then sorry man that file isn't up there you forgot about it so this configuration is now broke it stops that from happening so that's a really nice feature of flakes but uh, the real main feature of Flakes is it's got a very simple syntax where it takes uh, it has a description inside of the Flake that's useless. That's just for since you're gonna you might have multiple different Flakes on the system, which are all gonna have Flake.nix files. Inside of that Flake.nix file, you have a description, so you can kind of tell them apart at a simple glance. It's pretty much the way you can think of a description. Then it has inputs and outputs, and inside of a Flake. You're telling it where you're going to pull, you know, your packages or wherever. Those are your inputs. You're, you're telling it where to go and get stuff, where you're going to be 
inputting things into the system's configuration. So you could, for Nix packages, you could do the unstable branch. You could do the stable branch. You could do upstream if you're genuinely insane. You, you could do all of that. Uh, you could tell it to pull Hyperland from somewhere or that you want Nix Vim or, you know, Nix Colors. You, you, you get what I'm saying. You can pull all these stuff, put it into the configuration. That's your inputs. Then your outputs is the actual configuration that you want it to go in. Now, I said configuration there, but I should have said configurations because you can have multiple different configurations, name different things, and then chosen with dot hashtag. Uh, so if I go over here into my repo, you'll see down here in the guide, I actually tell you to sudo nixos rebuild switch the and then the dash dash flake and dot hashtag and then the host name you set in options dot nix. I kind of need to change this because some people thought you need the dot nix needs to be there, but no, that's actually I'm just literally telling you put the host name that you put in options dot nix. So we may change that syntaxing, but just to make it a little bit more straightforward for people. But if you go into the options.nix, there's a host name right there. And if you go into the flake.nix right in here, and I know my text is super small, but if I go in here, you'll see that down here in options under NixOS configurations, one uses the host name to define itself. So you're essentially, you can name your NixOS configurations. And then when you're running, your rebuild, you can tell it to pick a certain configuration inside of this folder. So that means you can have completely separate configurations for multiple different things. Um, like maybe your laptop, maybe your desktop, you want to have completely separate configs for them. Boom, you're good. So that's kind of the feature of, of Flake's surface level because another main reason you may want to use flakes is when choosing this configuration and building it out it's going to generate a lock file the lock file tells the system where where on those branches or where on those inputs to go and get the specific package it installed so i guess a better explanation would be when you run the rebuild switch command for a flake, it's going to generate that lock file with the exact versions of the packages and everything your system is building with from those inputs. And it and it and that lock file will be used for subsequent rebuilds for the same stuff. So if you add something new, it'll be added into that lock file. But for things that are already in there, it is always going to build with that exact commit version from the input that you gave it. So just theoretically, we're running the unstable branch. If we, if we install, let's say Hyperland from the unstable branch, inside of that lock file is going to be defined the exact commit we pulled from the unstable branch for Hyperland. So in months, years down the line, someone else can come and grab my config and pull it down and they're not just going to be pulling down the latest versions of packages from unstable to build the system. They're going to be pulling the exact versions I had from unstable. So this cuts down on a lot of potential breakages in the system because, you know, newer packages have, uh, they've updated their syntax for the configuration or so on and so forth. It cuts out a lot of those problems, which is great. So, this this may be a reason for you to try flakes. I think they're really nice when it comes to NixOS. And also, I do want to say, if you're new to NixOS and you would like some help, my Discord is down below. And I try to spend an exorbitant amount of my free time helping you guys get your stuff set up and understand NixOS overcome the issues that you're having. Like, for example, so somebody was having the issue where, and this is a very common one too, where you haven't set up Home Manager to back up some files, and even some it still won't back up 
de depending on what we're talking about here. But anyway, when you build your system, there might be files in the way of something that you're placing. And so it'll give you this big error and it'll tell you like, you know, these files are conflicting and just with the sheer amount of output, some, it, it can be really hard to figure out where uh, something useful is being said. So look, any type of those issues, anything, I am totally happy with helping. Uh, I've got plenty of other people on my Discord who are more than happy to help you get stuff working. Nix is extremely different, extremely different than other Linux distros. There is a massive learning curve because, well, you're not just it's setting up a system like you normally would. You're essentially writing a writing scripts and binaries to build your system. Well, not scripts and binaries. You're writing scripts to build your system like you would a binary. And so it's there's a level of programming involved. There's a level of understanding, you know, the Nix file system as most in Linux distributions work where you know, there's libraries under user lib or user lib exec and stuff like that. In Nix, everything's under the slash Nix slash store. So the hierarchy is different. Just in general, there's a lot to learn. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to come on over and be a nuisance on the Discord. If you've got basic beginner questions, you're not a nuisance. You're it, it's not a problem. We would all love to help you out. And a lot of the basic questions that she would have with Nix, we had those same questions. And if it wasn't for somebody helping us out, we probably never would have been able to find the help inside of the documentation. So yeah, if you're looking for help or anything, my discord exists. I also thank, thanks to you guys. I can do this. Uh, for everybody that from everybody helping out on YouTube, you know, being channel members, all that kind of stuff, going over to my Patreon and supporting me over there, which by the way, I'll just quickly run through all the guys who are supporting me over on Patreon. Zuski, Michael, Grizzlyware, uh Donald uh D dubs, four, uh Steve, Dark Zero, Russell, Nate, Forlorn Idealist, Zach, TGB, Papa Smurf, and Matt from the Linux cast. Thank all of you guys. My my pa my Patreon memberships are growing. Um, I, you guys really do seem to like the fact that I'm trying to help out people, and it seems to be something that you want to support. So thank you guys. I genuinely couldn't be happier. I I love spending my time just engrossed in NixOS and helping other people use it. So thank you, thank you guys just so much for that. That it, it is really really awesome. But if, if you're looking for help with NixOS, you don't understand a concept, please come ask questions. Please.